The yeah. most special guest joins us now. Really, this is just Pete's birthday because Pete is the biggest Logan Stankoven guy in the world. And Logan Stankoven of the Dallas Stars joins us now. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. So you're eligible for Rookie of the Year this year. Is it weird when you're like you just played in the Western Conference final and you're pretty experienced at this point and now it's like maybe grab Rookie of the Year as well? Yeah, it is. It is a little weird, but um, just worked out well that way. If I played one extra regular season game, then yeah, I wouldn't be eligible. But um, it's nice. Hopefully, this year I can get a full year under my belt, and uh, it's going to be a tough award to win, but um, definitely something I'm aiming for. Do you like? Do you, do you feel like a rookie though? Just given that you've done so much and you've like been around so many veterans for a little while now. Um, I still feel like a rookie. Yeah, I think, I think last year, um, I got a good chunk of games in, but it went, it went by pretty quick. So, um, looking forward to, uh, the first full season. What's the, uh, what's like the stars room like? Cause one of my favorite things about your group last year was like, you have stars at basically every age level of, of like an NHL experience, like you and Wyatt, awesome guys in the, in like middle quote unquote middle age. And then you got the older guys like Joe Pavelski, Tyler Sagan. So like, what's the dynamic in that room? Like between everybody at different stages of their career? Uh, I think it's really good. Um, I mean, all the guys respect each other, which is nice. And like you said, there's a crop of younger guys and um, some older guys that are veterans and have been around the league for a while. So um, I think everyone gets along really well. Um, Obviously, Younger guys hang out a bit more, you know, with their group and older guys kind of have their group, but um, everybody really respects each other. And that's the main thing. Uh, You live with Joe Pavelski, you and Wyatt Johnston did. Was that incredible or do you feel bad that maybe you had too much fun and made him quit hockey? (laughs) (laughs) No, it was, it was awesome. I'm really, really thankful that Pav opened up his house to, to myself and and let me stay there otherwise I would have been probably stuck in a hotel so um it was nice to kind of get to know him uh really well him and his family and he had a younger son so it was fun hanging out with him as well so I was going to ask about like what always fascinates me when players stay with older players is oftentimes the reason why people say this older player will be good for this younger player is because they're parents themselves and they have kids and what that means is young hockey players end up staying with like a family not you're like you're not just staying with joe pavelski you're staying with an entire family what's it like being around a family like that like i, I want to say it was uh lee stempniak stayed with keith kachuk and would just like play hockey with the kids because he's like shit i'm here i like hockey they're running around i'm young i'll do the same thing what's it like being around like a, an actual family yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I mean, they do, like obviously Pav and his wife did most of the cooking, but um, me and me and Wyatt were staying there and we try and help as much as we could. But uh, usually we were the ones upstairs playing mini sticks with uh, the younger son, uh, Nate, while they were downstairs cooking meals for us. So um, it was a good setup and we, we really enjoyed it. Two, two questions. How upset were you when Pavs announced that he was going to retire? And number two, are you still going to be living with him even though he's not on the team next year? Um, yeah, it's it's sad to see him go. Um, such a great career. And I think it was just more tough, like, after the fact, not being able to, uh, you know, get him that cup. I think he more than anyone deserves it and um, was such a great role model for me and Wyatt. And, um yeah, it's obviously yeah, tough on the team and and uh, us for sure, you know, being able to live around him and kind of get to know him pretty well. You ever get yelled at l- around the house? <laughs> no, no, not at all. He's uh, he's a pretty relaxed guy. So, um, yeah, we we really enjoyed his company. Didn't get grounded. Yeah. What was what was the weirdest <laughs> part of li- like because you're also I'm sure you're trying to acclimate to the team you're trying to make a good impression on everybody like was there any moment where you're like shit i don't want to like make the wrong impression or i don't want to do the wrong thing here is it intimidating to be in that situation yeah at first i was really shy i didn't really want to uh you know eat too much food at the house or um yeah just certain things like 
I was pretty quiet, kept to myself. But uh, you know, as as the days went on, I kind of opened up a bit, and and you know, we were chatting more, and and uh, it it all worked out well. But at first, you're you're pretty intimidated. And you're like, fuck, I want, I want this guy to think I'm cool. This guy's an NHL legend, and this guy's a leader on this team. I want him to think that I'm coming in here, and I'm a cool guy. But if you're going in there, busting chops, shooting your mouth off, he could be like, cool, you don't get to live with me anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I can't believe it's taken this long to get to this point, but the reason why uh, I'm such a big fan of yours is uh, I'm five foot six. So I like to represent for the uh, for the short kings, and I always yeah. pull for the for the smaller guys. Uh, I last year I will say I'll blow some smoke real quick. I was very impressed that you came into the league, and one of the big things about your game that translated even into the NHL, you're very good down low, and you play very fearlessly. So I wanted to ask you just like what what that is like for you to enter into the NHL and still have that like fearlessness to your game, even as a small guy down below the, below the line and in the dirty areas. Yeah. I think it's just using that. Uh, I think first step quickness that I have. And um, I like to kind of protect pucks down low and, and hopefully make a play towards the net. But uh, I think I just had it from a young age, like not being scared to go into the corners or uh, take pucks to the net. Um, I mean, it's just part of the game, and you can't really uh, change your size, right? So um, at the end of the day, it's what you do on the ice and, and what kind of a, a positive impact you can have. So I think that's something that my, my, my dad has instilled in me and, you know, past coaches. So I think it's just uh, natural at, at this time. I'm sure your your height has been overthought at points in your life by other people, by coaches, by GMs and things like that. Pete, as, as someone who is 5'6", he gets to easily be like <laughs> he gets to easily be like oh I'm a short guy I'm five six or whatever you at five eight like w- what do you consider yourself do you like if somebody says he's too small are you like five eight isn't that small or do you put yourself in the kind of short king category as well? Um, I mean, I wish I had a few more inches on me, but uh, that's just the card you're dealt, right? And um, you you work with what you have, so. I think there's pros and cons to being, you know, a smaller guy and also a bigger guy too. But um, I think the perfect height would be right around 5'11", 6 feet. I think that's the perfect height. But uh, it's all good. You just got to work a little bit harder than everybody else and, and be a bit quicker. I've played this game with friends before. If you could sacrifice other attributes of yourself for height... And we even talked about, we were like, you know what? I was like, I, I'd like lose an inch or whatever if... I had better biceps or something like that. If you could adjust your skill set to be a few inches taller, where do you feel you could take away from and still be a good NHL player? Um, I think my upper body. I think like when I was younger, I did a lot of like upper body lifting and stuff. And um, I definitely would, yeah, take away some upper body strength just to to gain a few more inches. But that's like, that's what is the one of the biggest pros of being a short guy is if you lift you get big so much faster than the tall guys you have so much less work to do it's like the one thing that that you have going for you but i understand where you're coming from i also like the one thing about being like a short athlete is that even you like listed at five eight nobody believes that you're five eight because you guys get to usually lie about listed heights are you actually five eight yeah, I I think I'm right around it. I haven't measured myself in a while, but yeah, like if I'm not five eight, like really really close to it. So, see, you're training every like. How's your posture? You probably have awesome posture, right? No, it's terrible. <laughs> you can't fucking yeah, dude. I'm like good. I'm five ten or five nine or whatever. We. He, we're sitting there and it's uh, like the same because I have such horrible posture. Yeah. I know that I can afford to do that because I've got a few more inches. You don't kind of freak out about that, that like I, I can't afford to be slouching here. No, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess, <laughs> but I do have bad posture. I've been told that by many people. 
Hey, thanks for watching the channel. We appreciate everybody who checks out our stuff, but 80% of our viewers are not actually subscribed to this page. So if you could smash that subscribe button, it would go a very long way for us. The more subscriptions we have, the more visibility we get from YouTube, which allows us to do more. So press that button. Thank you. Do you think that do you think you would have been a first round pick if you were taller, if you were bigger? We always see guys slip beyond what usually they're projected to be picked because they're undersized. Do you think you would have been a first round pick? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think it would have benefited me. Um, I don't know if I, I can't answer that. I just, I don't know, I guess maybe, but, um, I do think, yeah, my height is definitely a factor of why maybe, you know, I, I dropped a little bit or, I mean, my goal was to always go in the first round and it was disappointing when it didn't happen, but, um, yeah, I, I guess teams just like the bigger players and, that's the way it is, and I'm sure it'll be like that for a long time. But um, I think there's always room for for more small pay, uh, small players in the game. So I, I know that you and the Stars made a deep playoff run. In full disclosure, Pete pulls heavily for the Stars. I respect the Stars an absolute ton. Love Tyler Sagan from his days in Boston. I'm an Oil man though. I like the Oilers. Pull for them. But that was an incredible series and. One of the like buckle up moments, and it's going to be kind of a not great moment, but trust me, it's a good conversation, was <laughs> game one, double overtime. You're, you're playing against Connor McDavid, which is the most impossible task for people who have played a million games against him. And I know that you played in that early April game where you guys smoked the Oilers, but when you're kind of inexperienced playing against an alien like that, and he scores that goal in double overtime where he kind of just like slips past everybody. And are you like, what sport am I playing when this guy is here? Or is it just like anybody else? Um, I think it's just one of those moments where you wish you made a better decision. Um, I remember that play. I was trying to go behind the net to, to help with my defenseman there and kind of give them some support. And the play just happened so quick. I think it was Bouchard maybe on the, the boards there, just sent it right across to McDavid there. And he, he kind of redirected it home. And um, yeah, I everything just happened so quick at that level. And it, it's, uh, it is surprising sometimes, but uh, I think it just pushes you to, to get better and um, you take the blame and you move on. Can you have learning experiences, though, against... Like, I know, obviously, famously, at the end of the series, he gave you your flowers, which were well-earned. You were great for what you contributed in the NHL this season. But is playing against him just kind of unlike anything else? Or is it closer than it looks to people like us? It's really... I think the first like game I played against him was really surreal and... I think it's always those top guys. You you idolize them growing up, and then you step on the ice with them, and you're like, "Wow, these guys are legit!" And um, they're just on a whole nother level. So, um, yeah, the first game you're kind of in awe, but then after that, you're like, "Hey, like I'm on the ice. I need to defend against this guy. Play him hard. Make sure it's not an easy night for him." What was the uh, what was the the playoffs like for you as somebody who just you know, you're kind of just like getting your feet wet at the NHL level and you go on a deep playoff run. Was there any, I'm sure it's not the first time you've been involved in playoffs, obviously, but like what, what maybe surprised you? What was difficult to deal with? How was that whole experience for you being so new to, uh, to the NHL level? Um, I think the physicality and the speed in playoffs definitely picked up and you can notice a difference right from game one. Um, you know, we, we went up against Vegas there, you know, defending cup champs and it was a war, like really physical and, and fast paced. So, um, yeah, it was, it was tough there. The first few games we lost, but we kind of stuck together and stuck with it and things worked out well, but I, I'd say those are the main differences. At the outset of the playoffs, did you guys look at the road ahead and be like, God damn, how do we have Vegas first round? Or was, because like, I remember looking for, because I was pulling for you guys and I, I looked at the bracket and I was like, Jesus Christ, they're going to have one hell of a road if they make it to the cup final. So did you look at it being like, how did we get this unlucky? Or was it just like you, you only beat who's in front of you? Yeah, I think we just stayed, we took it one series at a time and 
looking back on it, yeah, a really tough road and had to go through some really good teams to, to get to Edmonton there. But, um, that's just the way it works. Like once playoff hit playoffs hit, you know, every single team is good and anyone could beat anyone. So there's not really any favored teams in, in my opinion, but, um, yeah, I think, you know, the message in our room is if we can beat Vegas, we can, you know, beat anyone. And we were just ran into a really good Oilers team. So what do you make of the team this season? Obviously, Oilers go out and they make more moves. And I think that a lot of people in the West are talking about the Oilers, but you guys are back. You didn't get, you didn't lose a ton of, of players. And the word that we always use with you guys, even though you're young, is adult because you, they're so well coached. You don't make a lot of mistakes. Even after a gutting loss like that, as you go into your rookie-ish season, are you like, we're as good as anybody? Um, yeah, I think, you know, we had, we made a few moves, but um, I think we do have that great mix of a young core, but also some veterans that uh, can score and make play, big plays for us. So, um I think, you know, we have a great roster and just all about uh, who shows up and, and, you know, has a good summer and then comes to camp ready to go. How do you like Texas? I like it a lot. It's nice. Uh, good weather. You know, not much of a winter. It's different from back home in, in Kamloops where, uh, you know, I spent most of my uh, most of my time. You know, it's usually it's cold winters, but down there in Texas, it's nice and I, I I like all the people down in, in Dallas. They're, they're all really nice, so um, I enjoy it. Everybody has a welcome to the NHL moment. Did you have like a welcome to Texas moment? Um, that's a hard question. Um, I don't know. I think all the uh, the overpasses on the the freeways there. It's insane. Like you know, Vancouver, you know, here in, in British Columbia is like the big city, but then you go to, you know, Dallas, Texas, and it's got millions of people and, uh, it's, it's insane. Just, there's so many different exits and different freeways you can take. So, uh, you gotta have the Google maps out for sure. Are you going to brave it on your own? Like now that Pavelski is gone. And I do think it is a good question from Pete of just like, just stay in that house. If he wants to go somewhere else, whatever. Just stay there until he sells it or something. Squatters rights. Like, are you going to live on your own this season? Yeah. Yeah, I have my own apartment already set up. So there's going to be me, uh, Thomas Harley, and Wyatt Johnston all staying in the same complex. So um, it's nice that uh, we're all kind of staying near each other. Who's that, the adult in that group? Uh, I'd say Harley. Harley, for <laughs> sure. Even though he's the oldest. But, uh, yeah, he's... He's got an old soul. I feel like, are, are you allowed to be like a bit of a shit on that team? Like I said, you're also like, it, the team is so business-like and obviously there are a lot of big personalities. Like I said, I love Tyler Sagan, but it seems like, like as an Oilers fan, I was terrified of you guys in the playoffs because I was like, they just don't give a fuck, man. Like nothing gets to them. They're just unflinching. Can you be like a stupid kid over there or are is like it all business all the time no it's pretty much business for most part i think in the dressing room and stuff everyone knows their roles and um before games like guys are pretty dialed in and obviously we have our fun but um i think the leadership group you know does a good job of making sure that we're ready to go and um just staying calm you know not letting anything kind of get to us so I did want to ask you about uh, your relationship with Connor Bedard because obviously, you know, you guys tore it up at World Junior, and uh, I think you're one of the few few people in the world that can be around Connor Bedard's age and have him say like he idolized you, and like it was like an honor to play with you. So, how big is like that to you an ego boost to be like Connor Bedard said he idolizes me and said it was an honor to play alongside me, and like what's your relationship with with Connor at this point? Um, it's been really good. It's nice kind of getting to know him. I, I, you know, used to watch him lots growing up, uh, when he played spring hockey and I was always a few years older, right? So, um, one of my other buddies that I played spring hockey with, his younger brother played with Bedard on the same spring team. So a lot of those same tournaments we were at and we'd, I'd watch him, you know, growing up and during his games and he was always a stud. So, um, 
is pretty funny. The first time that I got to play with him was at uh, U18s in Frisco or Dallas, Texas there. And uh, I just loved playing with him and uh, got another chance at World Juniors. So um, I think we did have a bit of chemistry and it was, it was fun playing alongside him. What kind of benchmarks do you have in mind for this season? Are you like, all right, rookie-ish season, I'm scoring 50. Or like, <laughs> is there like, do you, because you've had so much success, whether like as a leader, whether like as a captain or just performing like crazy in the AHL, do you set certain goals and certain numbers going into a season? Or do you think I'm just kind of getting into the NHL here? Let's take it one game at a time. I think it's a bit of both. Um, in terms of goals, I think I think a twenty goal mark would be would be nice to hit. Um, I think that's maybe in terms of stats. I think that'd be a goal of mine. But I think taking it one game at a time and seeing where things go and you know making progress throughout the season is what's you know most important. All right, man. Well. It's awesome that you chatted with us. This is like a birthday present to Pete. Pete's <laughs> birthday was a couple months ago, but we're all aboard the Stankoven train. Calder, incoming. Thank you so much for joining us, man. No problem. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. And enjoy your rest of the, your day. All right. Good luck this season. Appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Thanks. See you guys. We all silly like the mayor. 